What's going on, quitters? Welcome to another episode of Don't Quit Your Day Job. Today, no, you know me. I introduced myself first. I've been doing this introduction 150 times. I can't remember. <laughs> you know me. I'm your host, comedian Max Mallon. Today is June 10th, 2023. It's a beautiful day in Brooklyn. The sky has returned to its nominal color, which is incredible. We can all breathe outside again. And I'm joined by a very special guest. He's from a far off land you may know as Chicago. Everyone, please give it up right now for Joe Medoff. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hold your applause. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, dude, thanks for having me on. This is sick. Yeah, of course. I um after you had me on your show in Chicago, and mm-hmm. then I had you on Two Virgins, and you came on a bad show night. That's, that happens, like, dude. I was like, I gotta get him on something else. So. Well, I mean, nah, dude, it's okay. That was that was a good time. That was a good. Uh, that was the first time my girlfriend ever saw Jeff, my brother. Oh, really? Before him. Yeah, and he was, he still brings it up, and we're like, dude, it's fine. <laughs> like, do you know how many bad shows she's been to for me? It's cool. Yeah, like, yeah. There's something about like. Uh, when like f- feeling always feeling bad about bringing someone to a bad show and those people are always like totally cool whatever <laughs> totally fine with it yeah <laughs> and i'm just like how like if i cost like if someone cost me a night or like half a night i would be like like i wouldn't be mad but i'd be like i don't know i gotta weigh options now you yeah know? do i gotta <laughs> keep knowing you like uh <laughs> But no, that's it wasn't dude, those late nights or as a showrunner, those things are you and David kept it together so much better than I would have. Really? Cause, <laughs> oh yeah, cause like it I mean, it sucks that cause like for comics on like a show that's like lightly attended, mm-hmm. you get it. You're like, all right, this happens sometimes. But like, yeah. when I'm producing a show and like n- there's not many people. We had one of those at discount recently when we were uh uh, a couple months ago when mm. it was cold it was indoor it was like i think it was like the first bad weather day after like a bunch of nice weather so like we yeah. had we had like a handful of people i was like tearing my hair out yeah yeah and that's only happened maybe like two or three times mm-hmm. but i'm like i want to sob every time yeah and everyone's like dude it's fine yeah <laughs> I hate that feeling, and that's why me and David don't have a show anymore. Is because there was like a like a two months of descent to zero audience members, Ooh. and it was like we can't we can't keep booking people on this. Did you ever have regulars? <laughs> we had some regulars, oh, but right, nice. they kind of. We had one regular that was basically there to the end. Shout out to Randy, and that was Randy. Uh, he was sick. Um, there was a few others, but they'd pop in and out, but it wasn't like enough to like fill a room, you know? And yeah. There was a lot of logistical problems with that show. But you should have just rebranded, dude. Just call it Randy. Just Randy. Just, just for Randy. Randy. <laughs> and hey, yo, dude, I'm on Randy this week. Like, hell yeah. <laughs> and then there's going to be at least Randy. That's pretty funny. And that's the gimmick. It's I like Randy that. Randy will be there and maybe some other people. Like a headliner audience member. Like you're, exactly. like yes, you're a jester exactly. performing for a king. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, dude, I made Randy laugh. Like, oh, hell my God. <laughs> dude, I got passed at Randy. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I got a guest spot in front of Randy tomorrow night. <laughs> Two and a half minutes. I hope he likes me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you were a comedian. Your brother Jeff mm. is a comedian as well. Jeff was in this podcast probably a year, year and a half ago. Episode fifty five, if I'm not wow. mistaken. I listen. I listen when I can. Almost two years ago. That's yeah, I crazy. Know. Wow. So you are Jeff's younger brother. Yes. And how long have you been doing comedy for now? Uh, I've been doing comedy. That's uh, well, well. Let me ask you that question as an answer. Like, what what do you tell people? Four and a half years. Four and a half. I kind of I kind of started and just did not stop. So it's okay. a very clean. Break. So like. You were just like going every single like full speed ahead from the first day. Basically. Okay. Cause that's when I've met people who were like, they consider when they started comedy, their first Mm -hmm. open mic. But like some people like, are like, yeah, I I did a mic and then I dipped out for a couple months and I came back and I dipped out for a year and then I came back. So doing it like they're really spotty. And then Mm -hmm. some people are like, no, when you first start is when you first started doing it seriously. Yeah. Uh, so depending on when you ask that, God, I've been doing it probably about, uh, probably somewhere between six and nine years. Gotcha. Cause, okay. Because I started in college, mm-hmm. but I didn't start seriously till after I graduated. That's fair. Yeah. 
If um, I count first open mic, I did an open mic in my dorm, like the first month of college. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> so it'd be like if I counted first start, I'd be like, I've been doing comedy 10 years, 10 years. I but know. that God, I so. will never say that. <laughs> no, I don't think anyone will without without like TV credits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the longer you go without credits, the sadder it is. But oh, I will not I will not jinx it. And you, I appreciate everyone and their creativity. It happens to some people. It's fine. Yeah. Don't want to jinx myself. Keep, no, of keep my karma good. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. So you started in comedy. Where'd you go to where'd you go to school? Uh I went to Emerson College in Boston. Nice. Got like a little comedy reputation. Mm -hmm. Um and uh yeah, I don't know. They had like Mike, they had like 80 sketch and improv troops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh I eventually rose up the ranks of the stand-up troop. I didn't know. We were just a group of yeah. people like, hey, come do another night. Did you know? Did you know Sean O'Connor? Yeah, I knew. I Sean was my roommate, and yeah, no way. Yeah, for like the I knew him all at college, and he was my roommate like the last semester of senior year. Damn, in my apartment. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Because cool. he does his podcast here, and uh, oh, does he? Yeah, yeah. Damn. S and D Pod. Check it out. They do prank calls, but he keeps oh, bringing people in who are who went to Emerson, like guests and people he knows and stuff. Nice. So cool. I don't know. Yeah. Um. A bunch of people do it i just ran into some i did the show of some bu kids i met when i was at emerson recently a lot of those connections still pretty tight because mm -hmm. like they were cool back then because we're like yeah man we're all trying to do comedy together nice and now like it's like a second kind of refresh whenever you see those yeah, people because yeah, yeah. now it's like seeing war buddies you're <laughs> like, <laughs> like hey man you survived man i miss matt <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah matt's gone <laughs> we lost matt to law school mm -hmm. or whatever there's something also about like reconnecting with people you knew in college like when you're like five years into like like post that you know because mm -hmm. like er like people in college have so many expectations about like here's what i'm gonna do right after school oh, i'm yeah. gonna do this and then you get like two years of trying to figure it out and it's like oh no reality sets in now we're chilling we're kind of just pursuing the thing you oh know? absolutely especially now dude i thought if you asked me in college i thought i was gonna come here like day one mm -hmm. New York. Um, that was kind of a reality check. It's like, oh, you think you're going to New York? How about Swampscott, Massachusetts to your mom's home for a couple of years? Yeah, yeah. To save up money to move to the Midwest. Mm. So I went to Chicago instead. Why'd you go to Chicago? Uh, I I don't know. A couple different. Well, Emerson was a film school. All right. me and Sean's like college people went out there and mm -hmm. I fucking hated it. I... The scene is just, it's, I don't want to disparage anything. In, wait, in Chicago? No, in LA. Oh, in LA. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, The scene's fine. Uh, I just think you can get that anywhere else. But yeah. You don't have to compete with like Patton Oswalt dropping in. Or yeah, like yeah, yeah. driving 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Or um, being funny. I'm sorry. I cannot <laughs> shit on LA comics. They're so bad, dude. Have you seen them? I told an audience uh, <laughs> a couple weeks ago, I was like, here's a little secret, guys. When LA comics come to New York, we love it when they bomb. Oh, <laughs> my God. They're like, what? Why is no one laughing at my public journal reading? I'm like <laughs> talking about me a lot, and I'm going like this, and no one's laughing. I don't really get it. Yeah, I rolled the dice on a couple LA comics during Two Virgins that mm -hmm. like hit, me, hit us up to do a spot. Big mistake. Uh, Dude, it is. <laughs> and obviously there's funny people out there, but I'm like, what the fuck is in the water? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I have a disclaimer. We have a we have an autoresponder for my show, Discount Therapy. Whoa. Uh, we, oh, yeah. Big money. Um, we, our auto response, you know, when you submit, because uh, we only take submissions from out-of-towners. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, if you submit to Discount and then you get the auto response. At the end of the email, it says, oh, and if you're from L.A., you have to be funny. <laughs> and I, I campaigned my co-producers to have like a whole paragraph on why I feel that way. And they're like, no, just that one sentence. <laughs> they had to cut down. I've heard that one of the reasons why that happens is people in L.A., they move to L.A. to get into film or TV or like other types of like mm -hmm. media. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they get an agent or whatever. And their agents like, well, you you need something to stand out. So you got to like have a project you work on or do stand up or something. And so like people are doing stand up as a secondary activity. Yeah, that's, and that's it, a lot of the case. Yeah. And then it becomes like the only thing they're doing because they can't get anything else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just like even the mics, I just went there and it was just like dudes who look like us talking about porn. And nice. I'm like, oh, so it's, love it. 
the same everywhere, but yeah. <laughs> hot. But I drove to get here. And, and I drove sucks. to get here and have to go into debt for my car payment. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone's trying, literally everyone I meet is trying to be in the showbiz industry. Like, this is not mm. a conducive. I like the weather. I like some things about it. But I'm like, I just, this is not for me. Um, <laughs> I am so, so glad I picked New York. <laughs> yeah. Where are you from again? Denver. Denver. That's right. I've so, yeah, the it was like. Said that. I was like going to leave Den like, well, Boulder area, Boulder specifically, right. but I was like, um, oh, I'm going to leave here and do comedy. Is it going to be L.A. or New York? And I did a lot of comparison and it really boiled down to like, well, I want to get rid of my car. So <laughs> and I'm so glad I did. Now, yeah, dude, you made the right choice. Yeah. You know, uh, Noah Reynolds or Evan Hall? Uh, uh No. All right. They're 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 cool guys. I think Noah's still in Denver. Evan's in Chicago. Mm. big denver boys there was like i mean i just i just did it there for a year so it was like 2018 oh, okay. to 2019 so yeah. there's like a window and a, like a slice of very specific people i know and after yeah. that no <laughs> uh, yeah but okay. so but, you were like fuck la i'm not going like, there fuck la i've always wanted to move to new york me and my like high school friends had mm -hmm. like a pat no a pact you know we were like dude we gotta go move to new york one day oh. yeah, yeah and uh uh i don't know just I love this place, but like I came by and it was like, I don't know. I just think I was like, I don't think I was ready for it. Mm. I was like, I think I would have just come to the scene, the city, got some like barista jobs, struggled to pay my rent and then washed out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, I think, I don't know. I got to, I got to steal myself a bit. And then, uh, my sister at the time was in school out in Chicago. Mm -hmm. We went to go visit her and I did some shows out there and I was like, oh, this is this is great. Also, there were a lot of good Chicago comics coming through Boston mm -hmm. who I saw and I was like, they put kind of Chicago on the map for me. Mm -hmm. And then I saw the talent out there and I was like, wait, these guys are really good. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, cool. Because like Chicago in the comedy community, community was no, I, I'm being told I have to enunciate more. <laughs> I, can't, I can't go into my 30s sounding like a masculine kindergartner anymore. <laughs> the quove, I don't know. Um, <laughs> The My, talent pool. The talent pool. I'm <laughs> trying to get an agent. <laughs> no, that was a stretch. I fucked that one up. Oh, but my whatever. God. Um, <laughs> a comic who gets fam famous for doing baby toddler voice, for doing five-year-old speech impediment. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, nah, New York. I mean, Chicago just seemed like a good fit as a city. And also, mm -hmm. I was like, I think I need to grow as a, I think I can also be a person person here. Mm -hmm. Like my life won't just be a thousand percent comedy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, I moved to Chicago and yeah, my life was like 850% comedy. And I got like a <laughs> smidge of being a human mm -hmm. outside. Like I had a roommate who wasn't a comic. Um, that was, that was like my little window into the real <laughs> <Yeah>. world. <laughs> and uh, no, nah, it was cool. And then uh, things just kind of fell into place there. Nice. Yeah. I like Chicago. I, I speak very fondly of it because I had a really dope day when you had me on your show. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, dude. You did great. Dude, I still think about that rat fuck alley bit. <laughs> dude, I I was doing it so much that I did not do it for all almost all of 2022. Yeah. Because I was like, this is becoming too much of a crutch. And I did it's, it. It's done. I did it the other night for the first time in like eight months, yeah. just like as a goof. And it's still crushed. And, I and the like, crowd went wild. Yeah. And I'm like, that's why I don't do it anymore. Because like, oh, shit, Maxim's doing the classics. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> He's playing the album again. Yeah. The audience knows me they know yeah. all my material <laughs> <laughs> dude you're gonna go on the rat fuck tour the rat fuck <laughs> tour <Maxim Allen. laughs> i wanted to make uh i was thinking about making sweaters that say uh rat fuck alley jazz ensemble class of 2020 like That's funny but <clears throat> i did not because i was like i there's something about me i feel like that joke was so iconic for so many of my friends and people who knew me that i was like i have to I almost have to get rid of this or this is going to become like the safety net. And I don't want the the joke safety net. like Yeah. That. But like, uh, I guess. Well, because out here you're doing like, I'm shocked at how little time, like, e like even really established people mm -hmm. like who are on shows are doing like, because I mean, you do mics, you do like what, three, four, maybe five. And then I meet comics who come to, we had a uh, uh, Jess, uh, Jess Levin mm -hmm. on in mm -hmm. Discount. She's um, awesome. She's great. Uh, she wasn't scheduled to headline, but our headliner canceled. And then she ended up closing us out. And we're like, can you do 20? And obviously she can. But she's like, oh, my God, yes. I never get to do this much time yeah. <laughs> out in New York. I was like, really? Yeah. Like, you're really fucking good. And we get like, I'd say like a, a good, like long set. You're getting 10 to 12. 
like and that's yeah. but <clears throat> most most spots are like eight eight that makes sense that's a good amount of time yeah you know? i also think like for audiences especially comics we're kind of at our level mm -hmm. it's almost better to sample a bunch of comics for eight minutes rather than be trapped with one person that oh, yeah. is like you don't know for a long time. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know. No, I completely agree. You got to have like a good flight of people. Yeah. Especially if it's like a showcase thing, but you mix it up, all that. And you're coming out here. You're like, where do I get 35? How can <laughs> who's going to give me 35 minutes? <laughs> Look, buddy, I'm doing 25 minutes in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> New York better meet those goddamn standards. OK. And they're paying me nine hundred dollars to do it. <laughs> uh, hey, they do pay nice. The uh, it's kind of funny, though, because when people do long time here mm -hmm. in New York, it's just called the one man show, one woman show. It's like, oh, yeah. this is like, I mean, what you're doing, this is a stand up special. It just has a theme. Like, well, I think there's a difference between one man shows and stand up specials. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference is if they're funny. Yeah. In my yeah, opinion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and most comedian ones who put them together are supposed to, they are just funny. Just funny. I know. And like, I've seen good one man shows, but also sometimes I'm like, I feel like one man show is kind of like a safety net of mm. the special where you're like, oh, yeah, there was like a long period of time where no one was laughing. It's a one man show. You know, I was setting yeah. it up. It's like, a, you know, it's like being a humorist. Like, mm. I, I don't know. I don't want to be. I've never done a one man show. They're probably mm. very hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to come out here being like, yeah, I know everything. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. That's yeah. fair. So you when you started in college, what was the thing that got you to start doing comedy? Like, what were you? Uh, I think I always wanted to do it, Just, like at least in the back of my head. Who are your early favorites? Oh, what man. are you into when you're younger? Well, it's hard because they're all canceled now. Mm, like, that's like, fair. I, I will say like eight out of ten comics come on the show. Say Louis C.K. Oh, Louis. Of course. Yeah. Louis. <laughs> I think Judd Apatow's funny people made me. I was always interested in stand up from like 12, 13 like 11 since I knew what it was. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I saw Judd Apatow's funny people and I was like, damn, like stand up comedy is really cool. Maybe I should do it. Mm -hmm. This is so cool. <laughs> Did, have you watched funny people? Mm -mm. All right. You don't need to. It's, I don't like it's, Judd Apatow. That's fine. I completely understand. Because <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I rewatched it. It's a bad movie. Bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of ashamed it had such a big influence on my life. Mm -hmm. But um. No, I was like, that got me into, uh, uh, like the idea of like doing stand up. And then Louis released Hilarious maybe mm -hmm. a year or two after. And I was like, I gotta, I gotta do this. Like, I gotta <laughs> try. Like, this is amazing. Like, Louis yeah, just yeah. spoke to me. Mm -hmm. He's like, he, when he first came out, he had that like garbage man philosopher kind of like viewpoint. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know. It was just, it was great. Um, I feel like my freshman right. year of college was just watching Louis specials on repeat with oh, people yeah. I knew. Just like, this is the best. Dude, Louis, me and my high school friends would just like take albums, like, or just like put a iPod or like put something in the middle of the room and just sit around and like listen to like Louis or Mitch or like it's like the 1930s around a radio. Exactly. <laughs> just closing your eyes, <laughs> listening to Louis CK. Like, wow. Hey, this <laughs> girl at the bar is a hot <laughs> joint right here. Yeah, man. These cats are cooking. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah, it was great times. Um, Louis is great. Uh, Woody Allen for like the cinematic version. I, it's honestly gotten to the point where I'm just like, maybe I should stop having influences because mm. they might be me. <laughs> like it might just be my me getting interested in these people my, just retroactively somehow then they get canceled mm. or just they do horrible horrible <laughs> things turns out they're horrible people i feel like most people who get to that level of spotlight mm -hmm. they have something wrong with them oh yeah to get that, to that level oh dude there's something wrong with the people who get to like half that level of spotlight dude. i'd say the, the worst people are the people who get to half <laughs> <laughs> yeah because it's like yeah you're insane for nothing <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy like i've been i've been thinking recently that the i'm like what what is my problem with some like comics or some creatives that i don't like and i realize it's just like when people make like their whole thing like an ego project like when they're just like doing it like I need attention. I need you to like worship me. I need to do this. Like you get that vibe from people sometimes. I'm like, oh, you're the you're the people who get like one thing and then stop talking to everyone you know. Like oh, that's dude. that vibe, you know. Uh, so many. I've been around this long enough. I've met so many people who you like start to be friends with in mics. Yeah. 
even like local show shit. Like they'll mm-hmm. like get like a show or like try to move, and then they just like kind of give others like the cold shoulder, and it's like, dude, yeah, you're doing a bar show, like fucking <laughs> get off your high horse. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. I've, it's so many people like that. It's insane. Because yeah. I'm like, we're we're all gonna be doing this forever. Like, let's be real. We all fucking suck. We like- all suck. <laughs> and like, look, you're not wrong for wanting to not suck. Yeah. And you got to like, dre- you know, you got to dress for the job you want. Mm-hmm. You got to dress like you know what you're doing. But I'm like, dude, just don't be that guy at Mike's who's like, why is it, who's who's the like, why are they talking to me? Like, you're like, maybe not saying that, but like, yeah, that vibe, you know? Yeah. Like, just just be friendly to everyone unless until you find out they're not funny. <laughs> and then when they get funny, be friends with them. Yeah. Or tolerate them. I don't know. Just tolerate everyone. Yeah. <laughs> That's all we're asking. Because I'll admit, some people at the mics, like, I try to be friendly to everyone, but then you just meet some really clueless new people. Yeah. It's like, oh, talk to me in five months Yeah, when you yep. start to know what. Don't just, like, come up to me and start being you you know yeah. like you're being a lot you're being your mental illness showing way too quick it's like, a jump scare <laughs> dude they're jump scare that's such a perfect way to describe them. there's like i do it where i'm friendly to everybody i'm very friendly to new people but i don't get invested until like i i know they're serious or they're like like mainly, mainly when they're serious exactly and that's like the mentality and yeah. like the thing it's funny because you do i've always held the opinion as long as you've been doing this for like two weeks, you get to have an opinion on yeah, comedy. Yeah. <laughs> Cause like you're doing that, you're already spending your time doing this. Mm-hmm. It's fine. You just have to know your opinion might not be fully formed. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. You know, and uh, what, uh, the thing, you, what did you just say again? My memory's been real bad lately. I don't like, know uh, like waiting till you know someone's invested. To invested. Like in the, yeah. Yeah. I was just in a, I was in Detroit last weekend. Nice. Uh, and, uh, I was doing a club out there and I just met, a, I met a guy who, a Michigan guy who just moved to Chicago mm-hmm. and uh, I was doing shows and he was like talking to me about like, Hey, what should I know? And I was just telling him, I'm like, look, if people don't like, aren't super into you at first, that's fine. They just yeah. need to know you got to, you got to spend your time there and just be invested and show that you're serious. Yeah. Cause then people are going to be like, Oh, he's like me. He wants to, even if, you know, he's not on the same wavelength talent wise. Like, mm-hmm. okay, he's out for this. Right. You know, you don't want to just be one of those guys who goes to like two mics. And is like, why am I not big yet? You yeah. Know? And uh, yeah, uh, that's, all, that's also the advice I give to like people who want to do comedy mm-hmm. is, um, is, uh, you know, just like it sucks. But the biggest advice I give is like, it takes time. Like yeah. your only problem starting out is that you need to invest time, which is fine. But the thing that sucks is that you have to give it like a year or two. Yeah. So it sucks, but just buckle up. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I think I, I've been thinking about this a lot lately is that starting at stand up comedy and sticking with it has now made me immune to being bad at literally anything else. Like, I could get in like right now I could be like, I want to start skateboarding and I would just know that like, I'm going to suck at this for a long time. A but if I just time. do it, I'll just get better. It's cool. You know, and Dude. like when you other people have it easy when they get into something and they suck, it might be like, oh, I'm not good. I'm not where I want to be for comedy. It's like you have to publicly shame yourself until you're okay enough that you stop being embarrassed by everything you say on stage. You have to be completely completely vulnerable about you, the lives. Even if you're not talking about your own personal life, the first bomb is like, oh man, I thought that was going to be funny. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's just so vulnerable. The <clears throat> it's It's crazy. Like I've been thinking about bombing a lot recently. And I don't think I've like I've had bad sets or sets that have not gone well. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've had like a true classic like early stand up bomb in a while. You know, like those those first six months when you like write a bunch of new shit and you're like, this is going to hit. It's going to go. And then you do a whole five minutes and like it's all swings and misses. And Ooh. you're like, okay. <laughs> And the worst part is the jokes you always want to hit never do. Mm-hmm. And then the set, you're like, fine, I guess I'll do this home run every yep, time. Yep. <laughs> and you're, you're kind of offended on stage. You're like, mm-hmm. really? That one? Yep. 
Uh, I had to start telling myself I need to uh, stop ignoring the easy laughs. Sometimes some will come up in a riff, and I'm like, I don't know. That's kind of dumb. Maybe I won't say that. No, those are laughs. Like, say that. Say the dumb thing. Those are laughs. (laughs) Hey, some of the best comics trick the audience. Yeah. You know, they don't know they're bad till they get off stage, which is kind of nice, honestly. (laughs) That's a good skill to master. Mm -hmm. Well, do people, let me ask you this. Do people, like, in your life, like, not comedy people come up to you, and are they still, like, you know, I've been thinking about maybe I should do comedy. Not really. No. Uh, not very many. I think like the people who say, "Oh, I want to try it out," are like, "I'm like, oh yeah, I could see you like actually doing this, okay, or like good. doing this in some capacity. Like maybe you're not a stand-up, maybe you're an improv or something. But none of the maybe I should I could do it. I've been thinking about it. You know. Mm-hmm. All right, that's cool. You so, get that often? Uh, not so much anymore. Um, you know, but there was like a time, especially back in Boston, like people in my like when I was like working to save up money to move to Chicago, like, mm-hmm. you know, people like my job, oh, dude, especially like my, like the, I used to work at a hotel and like mm-hmm. the GM of the hotel, not even the front desk manager, like my boss would kind of be like, you yeah, haven't thinking about trying stand up. And I would, it was such an awkward position because <laughs> I would, because ha- I know he wanted me to say like, Oh, I've always thought you would be so good, Tim. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like Tim. I don't think about you, and if I, I know if I thought about you, you ex frat star, almost certainly a Trump voting asshole. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> I would never want you to have a microphone in my life. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's such a weird, awkward position. And the thing I tell people, like when people are like, "I'm thinking about doing it. What should I know for my first time?" I'm like, "It's gonna suck." Mm-hmm. Or, or it's going to go great or it's going to go okay it really doesn't matter as long as you keep going yeah like people people put way too much stock into their first sets they really yeah. do yeah and <laughs> i'm like look you don't you're talking about the skateboarding thing i'm like look you can't just go to the gym one time and expect a six pack yeah 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 like yes there are different factors there's like genes some people have like different metabolisms I thought some like people pants. <laughs> What? <laughs> like you're wearing jeans oh, in the jeans. gym. <laughs> yeah, dude, honestly, some people there. Oh, I've seen the guy at the mic who's the equivalent of the guy in jeans at the gym. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've seen the guy like muttering in the corner and then he goes up and bombs and comes off. He's like, oh, that was great. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you seen that jeans motherfucker, that yeah. denim <laughs> asshole. <laughs> but no, nah, that's, I don't know. That's just what I tell mm. people. I'm like, you know. Some people get to the top quicker. It's just who they are. And then some people, I don't know, it's just all different. I don't know. At the end of the day, we're just making people laugh. It's fucking yeah. fun. Even if it doesn't happen, it's still a fucking great thing to do. Yeah. So, you know, just I, enjoy the ride. For first sets, I'm like, I tell people, I'm like, you just got to rip the Band-Aid off. Because yeah. once you do it like a couple times, you realize how it doesn't matter and it's fine. And oh, it's yeah. like, I'm, I tell people, I'm like, listen, you go to a mic, they're going to give you five minutes. Have like two or three jokes written that are maybe two minutes. Do that and then get the fuck off stage. And then you'll realize like, oh, it was fine. Now I can do this again yeah. and again and again. Because I think people in the back of their heads have that, no matter who they are as people, have that like egotistical, I don't even know if it's an ego thing, but it's that like desire to like want to get up on the mic and think, oh, I want to be a natural at this. I yeah, want this. Yep. And then they want to have that like that beginning of the music biopic. Mm-hmm. Yep. Where like <laughs> they pick up the guitar and everyone in the everyone at the music yep. mic in Nashville is like, oh my God, this <laughs> this man, this person's gonna redefine comedy. Oh my god, there's a Netflix talent scout in the open mic at the Lincoln Lodge. <laughs> at the Lincoln, exactly. <laughs> Although, hey, that's not a crazy place to find. The lodge is the best. Goddamn. I've heard um, people when I went out there, people were like, that's the that's the tiny cupboard equivalent of Chicago. Yeah, I, I like tiny cupboard a lot. But the only thing missing is a bar where uh, people can chill. Yeah, they have a bar, but oh, you do? can't really chill. Uh, oh, yeah. Because that. it's like in the show. I mean, like a sidebar. Yeah, room, yeah. You know, that's, that's fair. Uh, yeah. Lodge like quickly became my second home. Oh, mm-hmm. dude, my friend, uh, my friend Nick from college came to visit me in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And all I do is comedy now because like it's literally everything I fucking do. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, he came. He was like, we we're going to go grab dinner. And then I was like thinking of other things. And I was texting my girlfriend and I was like, I didn't like what if some things to do suggest that aren't comedy like blah, blah, blah. And so I ran like a list of shit by him and he's like, yeah, all right. That sounds good. Uh, have you ever heard of the Lincoln Lodge? Maybe I want to go there. Like, I'm thinking I want to go there. I want to check that out. <laughs> and I was about to be like, I, 
I live at the Lincoln Lodge. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> so after dinner, we went to the Lincoln Lodge. Nice. Yeah. I had a friend just move here, and uh, we've known each other since like second grade, right? Mm-hmm. And we we met up the other night, and it was before Lee, the show Lee hosted the Tiny Cupboard. So we mm-hmm. met up at eight. Her show's at ten. He didn't know about the show, and so we just met up, got drinks. And I was like, "Well, we're over here. Do you want to go to a comedy? Do you want to watch a comedy show? Oh, I'm here uh, like three nights a week, but like, you want to? <laughs> I keep forgetting what a treat it is for other people, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh wait, this is just another thing for yeah. me. This is <laughs> so wild. We get like wrapped up in like the in like just doing it as like a thing you just do, you mm-hmm. know, like doing a spot. It is truly like going to the gym because it's like a thing that you. Like you're doing because you want to be good at it, but you're doing because you want to be better. Yeah. And so you just kind of do it. And it's automatic. And then yeah. you're like, oh, people are watching this. Like, and they're remembering if I do bad enough or good enough, they will remember me. Yeah. And uh, TikTok is the steroids. Yeah. TikTok is steroids. <laughs> no, nah, I can't shit on it. There's a lot of good people on TikTok. Are you making clips? Are you a clip maker? Uh, I'm trying. I don't know. I put it. I put out stuff. Sometimes it hits. Sometimes it doesn't. I yeah. usually get like somewhere in the thousands range or mm-hmm. like sometimes i'll breed i haven't had one like really pop off right um yet hopefully i know i think i haven't also done the professional thing i don't edit like my mm. clips i kind of just like do i don't know i could do it a little more professional yeah, yeah i should probably try a bit harder we'll tell you what i'm gonna edit this podcast i'm gonna get the clip of you shitting on la comics i'm gonna make it look nice it's gonna have zoom ins it's gonna have camera motion it's gonna have great subtitles and it's gonna go viral oh but like, he's right they're all shit <laughs> Oh, dude, they're all going to subtweet me. They're all going to have their own jokes and they're all going to tweet me in all lower caps. Lol, he's right. I'm garbage. And that's going to get fucking 10,000 retweets. (laughs) Who is this fucking guy from the flyover city of Chicago? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm sorry. uh, I I can't. uh, Dude, I just. I, I hate them. (laughs) <laughs> i did a i did a zoom show with a couple of la comics and mm-hmm. they were just like they were just ranting and i was like who the fuck is this person and then like give it up for blah 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 they were they were on netflix and i was like you gotta be fucking yeah kidding me. <laughs> anyway i don't know Not were, to, <clears throat> my, fa- to, yeah. my favorite la comic trend that i noticed was um minute and a half of setup one punchline. oh dude next setup yeah and that punchline was uh so that's where i am right now <laughs> It's every fucking punchline they have. Yep. <laughs> uh, they're probably going to roast me for being this gross. Li- I didn't know I'd be on camera. I would have worn long pants and socks. They can only <laughs> they can only see you down to here. Oh, okay. So they can't see your feet. He's no. barefoot. Oh, okay. yeah, I am barefoot. <laughs> I uh, thought it'd be hot. I don't know. The shirt's wrinkled as all hell. I don't know. I should have. I should have given you this morning. The the. It's okay. We have people, I have people who come in here who are not expecting it at all, but most of our podcasts are. (laughs) We have podcasts that deliberately record not with camera Mm -hmm. because they feel like people will be more comfortable and open up more about their topics. Okay. Which is an emotionally intelligent move. No, absolutely. People don't want to be seen. I don't know. I think. Yeah, I'd like not to be seen. Mm. I hate attention. Mm. Interesting. Well, I mean, not that, not that I'm like, don't air the video of this. Yeah. yeah, Just like. I'm going to air it. Regardless, no, yeah, fine. I'm not going to edit a thing. <laughs> yeah, you have my permission. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, I just the hate. Dude, my girlfriend was giving me shit the other day because she's like, uh, they did a, it was my birthday on Sunday and they did a, like a little candle thing. And mm-hmm. it wasn't like a big waiter come out and like sing and dance, but like everyone at the table is like, happy birthday. And I wanted to like die. Yeah. I yeah. hate that. I hate attention. I hate dancing at weddings. I hate whatever. And she's like, you know, you public speak f- at least five nights a week, right? And I'm like, it's different. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's transactional. They're getting something from that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I don't, I, I don't know about you, but I hate sticking around after shows. Good shows, bad shows, doesn't matter. I'm like, I just hate being in the same bar and then people just like, I, I like the, hey, man, you were really funny. Thank you. I'm like, great. Like, but I just, I can't stand the. Now I'm just the talent at the bar. Mm. I, I hate that feeling. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I I don't mind that one. I, I will never ever <coughs> I, I hate dancing, dude. I, I would not be want to be perceived doing uh, that at all. It's brutal. But the happy birthday thing, I don't know. I've heard some people just say they sing just happy birthday with everyone else as a way to cope with it. Or you could like really ham it up and just put your face in your hands and just start crying <laughs> while they're singing. Give them something to remember. <laughs> oh, dude, that would be that'd be amazing. 
Just throw a tantrum. Or yeah, or if you know it's coming, you can have like a bag to put over your head. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a bag that just says birthday bag? You yeah. just put it over your head. I'm in my birthday bag. This isn't happening. That's a really funny gag g- gift, actually. Yeah, the birthday bag. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Happy birthday. Hide your shame. Hide I, your embarrassment. <laughs> we're all going to celebrate you while you while you spend time in the birthday bag. Yeah. <laughs> I think the uh, I think um, I used to be I don't think I was ever weird about being on camera Mm -hmm. being recorded though like when I first started podcasting there was like a little bit of like a who like what am I (laughs) gonna say goddamn trooper you have to listen your own face and voice say things like it's oh dude it's when I watch clips back it's brute like still it's brutal because I'm like I I hate everything right now I hate (laughs) everything on screen the way I the voice the face I think everyone kind of hates their own. So like for you to go back and edit all this, like that is a goddamn skill. Here's a little secret. I don't have to really edit. I just have, we just have an effects rack that does audio cleaning and EQing. So it makes everything sound good. Oh dude, hell yeah. Chad GBT, dude, let's go. Yeah, and I don't have to listen through it. The only time I listen through it is when I'm going back to make a clip. Yeah. And then when I hear myself talking, I'm like, I'll fucking kill you. Stop, like shut up. Nice. But back when um, me and my pseudo co-owner, Connor, we used to have this podcast called Small Town Radio. And this is before we got good at editing and knew what softwares to use. Mm -hmm. We would go through a one hour track and by hand use the uh, Adobe Audition auto heal tool to remove all the mouth noises and clicks and everything. Mm -hmm. Five hours of work of listening to this to your voice in one second spurts. And just like scrubbing out anything you might hear that's an abnormal. Oh, dude, that's so weird. Torture. That must be. It was torture. Because <laughs> you have to go back and listen to the, oh, dude, that's terrible. Actually, I kind of did that, sort of. Kind of well, me and my girlfriend, uh, we were joking around on the couch one day. She's like, let's start a podcast. And then we just like recorded ourselves talking. Like we pretended it was a podcast. Mm. Honestly, very cute date idea. If you're mm. out there looking for something to do. Just take a voice recorder on your phone, record a podcast with your significant other. Highly recommended. Very interesting. See where the topics go. Um, <laughs> I, but yeah, I was just like, oh, I hate my voice. Mm-hmm. I'm not funny and you're funny. We we recorded. We did one of those one time. We we're just sitting around. She was like, let's let's record a podcast. It's like, all right, about what? She's like, whatever. And then it was just kind of like a flop. I'm such like mm-hmm. a... I'm like, if we're going to podcast, we need a structure. We need a game plan. We need a topic we can return to. <laughs> Let's like bang this out and make it good. Yeah. And now we have separate podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a marriage. Uh, we, we do separate podcasts. You know, she podcasts in the other room and I podcast in the other room. And yeah, it's sort of like I have the noon on Saturday time slot. She has the two on Saturday time. slot. <laughs> <laughs> I get the studio on weekends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Split custody of the Split. microphone. <laughs> now, nice. Here's an idea that we have not done, mm-hmm. but I like the idea and maybe I'll make make her do it. <clears throat> A, a podcast just for you and your relationship. So mainly as a record for your kids and grandkids or whatever. So like every year, like you do an anniversary podcast. Like here's our story. Here's how we met. Here's our first year. And you just talk about it on the camera. Save it. Keep the file. You don't have to publish it anywhere. It's really cool. So that's a, that's an idea I got flopping around in my head. You just store it for like 50 years and then you get to see. Yeah. And then your, your grandkids are like, what the fuck is an MP4? And you're like, that's what we had. They had to convert it to hologram or whatever. (laughs) Oh, grandpa's in 2D. (laughs) (laughs) That's crazy. I don't know. That's, that's a really good idea. Thank you. I don't, would you have watched one of those of your grandparents? Absolutely. Yeah, I think I, I try to joke about this for a while. I think I think the problem like grandparents are wasted on children because <laughs> when you're a kid, your grandparents are just like two old people you hang out with and that have fun with you. Right. Yeah. Then when you get older, you start to understand like, wow, they've lived through like a lot. But by the time that you can really fully appreciate that and respect them as like adults, Mm -hmm. they're kind of on their way out where they don't want to give you a long answer to a question. Like I I literally asked my grandparents, like you guys were like you guys were like becoming adults, like you guys were in your mid 20s when Eisenhower built the interstate. What was that like for you guys? And my grandma would just kind of shrugged it off. It was like, oh, yeah, he did that. I'm like. What about like the Korean War? You guys lived there. Like what? It, just give me something. I don't know. Yeah. 
No, that makes sense. That makes total sense. I think me and my sister tried to do that to her grandma one time. And I don't know. I gotta. I don't know. Anyway, more interesting stuff. We had like a, me and my brother went out there a few years ago. They live in Detroit, actually. So oh, nice. I'm familiar with Detroit. But yeah. we just like sat them down in their front room that always has the plastic wrap couch like that type of vibe always that They're, same old people smell they don't have the plastic wrap couch but that's like the vibe of the room yeah. it's the quiet room oh no i totally you know? get it my my grandma does the same thing yep and we just like we just grilled them for like two hours we asked them every question about like their history and all mm -hmm. this we got the old photo albums we're like who is that <laughs> who is this what is going on <laughs> are you now or have you ever been a member of the u.s communist party <laughs> <laughs> yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't put that past them <laughs> <laughs> hey, some of them hit it. Some of them. Hit it. It'd be very. If I had communist grandparents, I'd be psyched. I'd be like, "Yo!" <laughs> I think there are some. I think there are some people who are like, I meet some people who are like, "Yeah, my grandparents, OG, OG CCP." Like you know, <laughs> uh, dude. What? What was I gonna say? Oh yeah. Um, something about plastic. Oh, dude. I think I have a theory. I actually have a theory about old people. I think this is the last good generation of old people. Because mm. I feel like our grandparents were always training to be old people. Yeah. Kind of, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the music, the, t like the, dude, the, their one dance move was this, yeah. which they can <laughs> still do. Yep. Like the music's like built for like, oh, how y'all say it? Oh, I take mm -hmm. out to the dinner and oh, you're my moon and my stars and my sky and my sun and the sun shines. I smell with you. Like that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. And, it's all still, they all still vibe with it. They put it on the wreck. It's just very good old people thing. Right. But back in the day, they looked like us and they just did it and they were young and blah, blah. But I'm kind of horrified for the people, mm. like the old people we're getting now. Yeah. Youth culture started in the 60s. Right. Like what with the, you know, whatever you call the 60s, the hippies, the whatever. So now we're, just, we're not going to get old people who know how to like bake. Or whatever, they're gonna be listening to like Zeppelin, and it's like gross. Right? Oh, dude! And when we're, when we're old, it's gonna be crazy because like our idea of like old people is that like you know Frank Sinatra, big band jazz, exactly. And stuff. And it, I'm gonna my grandkids are gonna be like, "What do you listen to?" I'm like, "Death Grips, <laughs> 100 <laughs> Gex." <laughs> I'm at the Pizza Hut. Yeah. I'm at the Taco Bell. Stop fucking talking to me! I want to listen to my sugar. <laughs> Lol, <laughs> like, gross. Dude. Oh. Yeah, have you seen a picture of Lil Wayne? Yeah. Horrifying. Yeah. Like, that's going to be most people. It's going to be crazy. Gonna... He's not even an old person yet. No, he's not. <laughs> but like, dude, he's, ugh. it's like Keith Richards, Lil Wayne, everyone's just going to look like that. Yeah. It's going to be, ugh. Dude, no, you, thank you. you kind of broke my brain here. You mentioned that youth culture started in the 60s. It did. It makes sense. It's like, I feel like all of history before that, it's like you're either an adult or or you're going to fucking be an adult soon. So exactly. get your shit together. It was learn the stocks, learn, get to work, get to yeah. like, you need to be life starts at 18. And then, which is when you better have it, three kids by then. Yeah. That kind of shit. And then we'll actually learn this in college. Uh, Cause you know, post-war post like world war two, mm -hmm. you know, everyone's coming back, American prosperity, blah, blah, blah. Everyone has money, all that stuff. We won. Everything's great. Rising empire. Uh, and youth culture sort of started, it like planted its seeds in the 50s mm -hmm. because, you know, they're coming back and, you know, there's all these like kids who are just like sitting around. Everything's fine. They don't have to go to war or I mean, other than like Korea or whatever. But, uh, you know, all these companies are like, oh, how can we get like people have money. They give their kids money. How can we get these money from these kids yeah, who go yeah. wild? So like the idea of disposable income kind of basically started like getting the ball rolling for like all of youth culture. Basically what Whoa. we know now is like TikTok, Fortnite, Lizzo, <laughs> <laughs> mini transactions. Yeah, yeah. Like people who have nothing, no money to spend on other than entertainment, whatever. Like, hey, come to the youth suffer thing. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah. And then it really hit its peak in like the 60s where it's like, hey man, being young is the answer. The young people have the answers. That was the first time in all of history where anyone said that. Mm -hmm. I can confidently say now, 
post TikTok, the young people do not have answers. Oh, without a doubt. I would have said if you were like, if you're like uh, MySpace era youth, I'd be like, maybe they got some answers. Maybe. And then TikTok era youth, I'm like, oh no, we yeah. cannot, we cannot look to <laughs> the <see>, children. <laughs> I don't like Gen Z because I don't like anyone who's confident. <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry. I just don't believe you. Mm -hmm. Dude, you're 17. You don't know. You haven't had to do this without help. Yeah. Like, and, yep. <laughs> and like, I get it, you know, global warming, all that. I do like how gung ho they are about like climate change and, you mm -hmm. know, political stuff. That's cool. But like, I don't know, just some of the way, ways they talk. I'm like, yo, you haven't seen life yet. Like, yeah. I think what, like, the millennials, there was something about millennials like, trying to fit in their parents world of like oh we're all gonna like go to college and make money and be successful own a house and not being able to accomplish all that so we all have like a baked in shame in mm -hmm. a weird way like we recognize these intangible these tangible things are almost impossible to get but we were like humble about it we're like we can't i'm like doing my best you know yeah gen z never had even the hope no. So they're just going full into thing, full confidence, being like, I'm doing my own thing. I've never been wrong. Yeah. And like also. Yeah. The thing. Well, youth culture is kind of trapping us because we like millennial Gen X. We were raised by people with who had the youth culture mindset of mm -hmm. like being young is the answer, man. So like we were and now we're raising our kids to be like, hey, you're great. You're like not to be like totally like. Because I don't believe in like the participation boomer, like yeah, that yeah, boomer yeah. thing is horseshit. But like we are raising them to think they're a little more special mm -hmm. than they are. Yeah. So like, ah. I also think there's something about like influencer culture and, like and influencer personal culture, brand, like that's kind of fucking with people. Influencer culture, YouTuber, dude. People have like parents who are YouTubers. Yeah. Like we need someone to make sandwiches. Not even make sandwiches at Subway. We need someone to like pack the meat. You know, yeah, yeah. like do construction. <laughs> Not everyone can be an artist, mm -hmm. which is a lot of people need to come to terms with that. I saw a TikTok that I actually loved. This girl was based like, you know, you see the, the classic thing of like, OK, so you think like that we shouldn't pay people who work at coffee shops like livable wages. Yeah. So do you think people shouldn't work at coffee shops? And I saw this TikTok, of this girl who's literally like, here's the thing. If it were up to me. I would just be a barista for the rest of my life. If I could just live on that like mm -hmm. um, like wage, mm -hmm. I would just do it forever because yeah. I would just be happy with that. And I'm like, that's crazy. It's like all we do is just like pull the floor out from people and like devalue what they do as time goes on to the point where it's like, what are we? I don't know. What are we even doing here? No, I mean, people should get a living wage no matter what yes. they do. But also we should have incentive to do the jobs no one wants to do. Yeah, like if you want to be, be living wages, <laughs> exactly. Well, I know, but like some, like some jobs are unappealing. Like that right. lady who wants to be a barista, her, which she won't in twenty years. She'll be like, I'm doing the same thing for twenty years. Like mm. she'll want to move on. Yeah, but like, you know, you can't just be a barista and then be like, hey, why is no one from the cinnamon bun place sending us the cinnamon buns anymore? Mm -hmm. be like, oh yeah, no one wants to pack the cinnamon buns. Yeah, because <laughs> it's a warehouse. That, I don't know. Um, living wages and benefits, baby. That's how you get it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, people should eat, believe it or not. Yeah, people should people eat. That's should a eat. crazy hot take. <laughs> eat and actually be able to afford shit. But yeah, the, uh, the, like everyone wanting to be like a content creator, influencer and stuff. Yeah. I always think about it as like, it's so prevalent now in everything. Like everyone wants their side hustle, the creative thing to be their main thing. And I hope every, most people get to make it. But what it is, it's like that's the that's the crying out for help in cal capitalism. That's like, mm -hmm. oh, this is the only escape I can see where exactly. I can get out of this like cycle and this trap where it's like, oh, there is no trap if the trap is just like a little bit more fair. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, dude, that's so also all the content constant content creation mm -hmm. is devaluing the art. Yeah. Because like now you just have so much content. It used to be. You would do, at least in terms of comedy, you would do comedy and then Johnny Carson would give you the gladiator thumbs up or yep. thumbs down. And now all of us, I didn't, it was, I like that there's less gatekeepers. I like that you just get to put your stuff online mm -hmm. and like make your own audience. But also at the same time, like everyone has a, like we don't have the same references anymore. Mm -hmm. We're like kind of on a different wavelength culturally. 
we can't look to our predecessors for guidance in a lot oh, of ways. Not, oh, dude, whenever I hear, like, I loved, he, I listened to so much comedy stuff. Like, I love hearing, like, Jerry Seinfeld or mm -hmm. someone talk about, like, comedy. But after a certain point, you're like, oh, this guy didn't, he's not doing what I'm doing. Not at like, all. He didn't do, he, he just went up at the comic strip and then someone's like, hey, you're good. Nice. You Be famous. Yeah. Like, I do that and someone's like, hey, you're good. Where are all of your TikToks? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where's your constant? Why aren't you famous already? Like, that's yeah. Or they go, "Hey, you're good. Can yeah. I hit you up when I'm in Chicago next time?" <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. There, I've someone I forgot who said it. They're like, "You can't. No one's gonna hand you a career now." No, that's what's hard. It's like even when I started comedy, I was listening to podcasts by comedians who are now in their like late thirties, right? So comedians who are coming up in like the early aughts, right, and figuring that out. And they were like, "Oh yeah." You do these things, you get into an institution or a club or something, and then you're kind of just make it. And then all of our generation is like, oh, no, that doesn't happen. Like you can do yeah. all those things, but you kind of get like little bits and pieces and none of it is just enough to carry you to the end in one like one fell swoop like it wasn't back in the day. You know, no, not at all. So I don't know. Are you a where do you stand politically? Like you're a leftist, you're a social communist. I'm, like, your... I'm like a super leftist. People. Okay. People keep calling me communist. Okay. And I think that's fair. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm right. not like like my my big issues is like I think if a if a government like wants to rule over people, it is the government's responsibility to take care, to of, take care of those people. No, yeah, that's I don't true. think it is a corporation's like job to provide health care yeah. or determine how much like the corporation a little bit can determine how much that like labor is worth but i think there's too much separating people from the value of their labor and not enough health care not enough education i don't know yeah just like i'm just like a no car health care get on a bicycle we need like uh, i'm yeah. i'm the europe i feel like i'm very euro euro European, brain yeah. yeah you're you're european centrist yeah sort of. <laughs> i'm a euro centrist, euro -centrist. Yeah. Which sounds like another way of saying white nationalist. Yeah, but... I'm, a, I'm not gonna say that because we're gonna... editing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, just I'm like very left. That's very it. Left. Same. Very I fall in the same category, but also like I don't know. I'm. I. It's so weird to like come to like some super lefty place like New mm -hmm. York. It's also weird because you have like no room to disagree with people. Also, you say you're a communist. It's very funny because I could see your face on like a. On like a banner outside the Krem the Gre I, was, I was about the to say gremlin. the gremlin, <laughs> the gremlin in Groskow. the gremlin in Groskow. Yeah. How, how about this? How about this? That's my. That's the poster. Yeah, <laughs> I, just this I today. like that, dude. <laughs> Does that hammer and sickle in the back? Ooh. A little Ushanka. Hell yeah, yeah dude. We have a. Uh, uh, I have an anime podcast with another comic. You and, do? Yeah. Nice. And we just review Mobile Suit Gundam. And that's such an old franchise. There's a lot of like old like grognard farts who just are like, Murr, you know, so Day we're one anime people. Yeah. And nice. they're just um, so we we're always talking about our leftist shit on there. And we're like, listen, if you made it this far in the series listening to us <laughs> and you're not used to us talking about communist shit, get the fuck out. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> are you hate listening? Are you uh, do? They must be. Like, cause you, you get to know you after a certain time. That's so you can't be, you can't be this deep in this. You can't yeah. be 28, 30 episodes in this podcast yeah. and like listening every week and still be like, <laughs> here's how demon slayer can seize the means of production. <laughs> eventually. So yeah, you're okay. saying come to a super lefty place. Oh yeah. Come to, I don't know. I just like, it's cool. It's cool. I like, I generally agree with most things. And then I don't know, just to go back to the Gen Z thing. I'm like, I don't. Like, I'm skeptical. Like, I agree with some aspects of communism. I think I'm mostly social mm -hmm. ist -y. I'm like, I'm like left of center left, yeah, I like yeah, to yeah. think. I don't know. I just meet, like, the people who are, like, anarchists. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you're fucking stupid. Like, you're just <laughs> yeah, straight yeah, up yeah. a moron. <laughs> like, oh, dude, there's no borders, really? No I'm like, have you met any sports fan? You really think we're going to give up borders <laughs> at all? I'm like, do you know, are you aware of like what a monumental achievement that has to be to be no countries like no border open? Every I'm like, if there is one country in the world, there's borders. Yeah, that's going to be hard to do. Yeah, <laughs> we're never not going to have no borders. That would almost like it would be so it's so impractical with the world as we know it, oh, especially because yeah. it's like. If you have people in charge, you know what's going to happen. Whoever's in charge of that mono country, they can do whatever the fuck they want. Exactly. 
It's, it's almost better to have. It's the thing with having multiple countries. It's the free market, baby. <laughs> it's, uh, like not even people just have like a national sense of like pride. Not even like in terms yeah. of America. You meet people who are like patriots other places. Mm -hmm. Like they're just like, yes, my culture, blah, blah. Like we're always going to have that. Yeah. Like what the fuck are you talking? And like even if you're like, yes, we're the best. Uh, like, it, like, let's say there's no borders anywhere. People are all on different communes. Mm -hmm. Look, power always rises to the top. Like, that's how the French have a revolution and then they get leaders again. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so even if we achieve that society, your grandkids are going to be like, yeah, our commune's better than their commune. And then guess yeah. what? We have borders again. Yeah. <laughs> like, there is a bit of human nature in there. Yeah. And try to get NFL fans to combine... Combined cities and combined <laughs> cities and location. Uh, dude, no people. Like, we're always gonna need that fucking hatred, that little bit of yeah. rivalry. Yep. Dude, the the Jets and the Giants aren't even gonna get together, and yep. they're in the same city. <laughs> <laughs> so good luck when it's the fucking Raiders and the Chargers. I think oh, yeah. what, what we have like nowadays is like this is a this is a very positive thing is like the search for individual identity mm -hmm. and like people accepting like who they are like this could be gender sexuality politic politics whatever people are having more discussions about those things and i think the reason why is because they fundamentally don't have a higher thing that they feel a part of that matters oh without a doubt like back in the day you just you'd be like we're catholic or we're american yes. we're like I was going to say German, but that, that ended badly. <laughs> no, it did but, end badly, yeah. but it did happen. And it was yeah. effective. But to it, be fair. <laughs> Trust me, it did. That one worked, actually. That is a good example. <laughs> but it's like you, people had like people felt like part of a higher thing. Yes. And people are so disillusioned with capitalism and their country. Mm -hmm. Maybe just in, other countries don't have this problem as much no. or some don't. But like especially American like people were just like. It's all fucked up. Mm -hmm. Like I like church is fucked up. The state's fucked up. What do what am I about individually and how do I find my tribe of those people? Yeah. You know? And I yeah, I think people are doing that now with like even the internet, mm -hmm. even like I feel like a lot of people they tend to you're talking about Catholicism specifically back in the day. I feel like people's political views are the new religion now. Yeah. Like it's everything I can be. Like I was saying you can't question any left anything or any right anything too which is funny because like like living in chicago and like traveling throughout the midwest it's a really cool place like mm -hmm. you kind of get like a little bit of like there's a little part of you like inside that's like oh no i'm going to iowa there might be like trump people and like they might look at me and see <laughs> jewish and scared but like you meet people who are like oh i've never met a jewish guy before cool and yeah. like i don't know then they just talk to you and they're normal and most people i think would agree to have that like even like people on the right would agree like the government should take care of people they just don't know because they've been like either a corrupted by fox news mm -hmm. or like b they've met leftists who are really fucking annoying which i credit them for yes mm -hmm. leftists dude people with pink hair i'm like stop dude <laughs> fucking, okay we get it you're different Fuck yeah. It. <laughs> yeah i don't know people are like Everywhere in the world, people, when they come to America and they go anywhere, like even big cities, not big cities, they're always like, Americans are so friendly, yeah. you know? And for like, I mean, yeah, there are like racism issues and stuff, but those people are typically not coming out of the woodwork. They're yeah. like holed up in their houses and like, I don't know. But it's like, people are generally believing the same stuff. It's interesting when you do talk with people who are like more conservative on the right, you can like handhold them and get them to agree with a bunch of like leftist talking points. It's yeah. just what they, the route they take is just different. Yeah. It's just the camp they follow into. Like yeah. what you were saying. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's weird. I don't know. Labels are dumb. It is dumb. I don't know. We, we should at least, at least relabel. I think that fixing the two state so party, <laughs> Two party, two parties. Yeah, we should fix the two state. Thing. The two state. <laughs> that's thing. a different yeah, that's right. issue. Oh yeah, that's a different place. <laughs> that's a different place. Yeah, I know. Um, we should fix the two party. Uh, so I think doing that mm -hmm. would even just have like a lot more. That would like reshuffle things. Because mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I think we just got to mix it up. I we think really we. Do. I think we should sell the government to the highest bidder. <laughs> Aren't we already doing that? <laughs> Isn't that what lobbying we should, is? We should just let our favorite billionaire, Elon Musk, run everything. Uh, Elon or dude, honestly, we should have a reality show to see who buys America. Like, yeah. Elon, put Elon Musk against George Soros and fucking whoever the big money people Damn, are. Dude, 
C-SPAN should be like formatted as a reality show with like cutaways, you know, like cutaway shots. Be like, listen, I'm trying to pass this bill and they're fucking me up. Cut back to them yelling on the floor. Mitch like, McConnell like, I'm not here to make friends. <laughs> I'm here to wait. <laughs> Dude, I think, yeah. the I think honestly, TikTok has completely ruined all of us because it has removed any illusion of how people are living everywhere all the time and oh, what yeah. they're thinking about. Mm-hmm. And it's also ruined stand-up comedy. Uh, in some ways. Yeah, no, in some ways. I feel like uh, one of the disappointing things was um, starting ca- comedy and being like, cool, I'm doing something special that people don't really do often. This is kind of a rare thing to pursue. And then see on, co- on like TikTok, be like, I don't know, there's, there's too many of us. There's too many. There's too many. But <laughs> also, that's not most people. Most people's because we do this and we yeah. follow people and the owl just shows up. Com- so yeah. we're led to believe that it's all just comedy, 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 comedy. But also, there's like, we forget how many people there are out there who aren't <laughs> trying to do this, who are like fans of this, who are like, oh, photo, nice. You look good, Stephanie. Yeah. And it's like, oh, a comedian. <laughs> Neat. And then like it's probably like someone of us or like mm. our level or like whatever. No, nah, there's a as disillusioning as it is to seem there are too many people doing this, and there are. I don't know. I'm I'm hopeful. I remain stupidly optimistic. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> that that's honestly one of the best parts about Chicago is like Illinois is such like a state. It's like the most state state. Okay. Because you have Chicago, which is like the blue area, the blue, mm. arguably world class city. I yeah. would say it's up there. Um, you know, industry, blah, 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 whatever, hip stuff. You have the suburbs, which are some of the most suburby suburbs. Yeah. You'll yeah. get you have the poor suburbs and the okay suburbs, mm. and the, they got the working transit system and all of them, and the rich suburbs, which are like money. And then you go past those suburbs, and it is like might as well be the south like yeah, it, is, yeah, yeah. it is real rural rural dude. Yeah. it is just wind turbines as far as the eye can see and then like you go to like states around that and it's like oh cool i get to do like shows out here and like talk i get you get a good range of people right right which new york i don't meet a lot of new york comics who are like yeah i went to i went to um westchester to do shows or like even f- like upstate yeah. or anything there's only a handful go well, no one has a car yeah so it's like there's only a select few people like i got to go on the road to vermont in february i I had to have someone drive me and drive me back where do you do um uh we matt vita and andre majorano have a show they're doing at ski resorts so we did sugar bush ski resort oh sick it was cool i don't ski but like i've heard of sugar bush it's a great place it was uh vermont is what coloradans wish Colorado was like and I I it's crazy I've, for me to say that I've never but, been to Colorado but I believe it here's the deal okay Colorado is similar to Illinois you okay. have a blue spot in the center right uh-huh. that's Denver and the surrounding yeah. areas and like a little bit of the summit county which is where the ski resorts are it's all in the plains and then there's mountains and then you have the western slope where there's Grand Junction not really a lot of people mm-hmm Everyone who lives in that blue Denver area is trying is like wants is super outdoorsy. So like weekend warrior, we're skiing, we're hiking, we're mountain biking, we're doing stuff. But you have to drive there. And the people who actually live in the mountains have a lot of money typically. Mm -hmm. So people are always like, oh, like I just want I wish I could just live up in Silverthorn or live in Cole Creek Canyon or something Mm -hmm. or live out there and just live away Everyone in Vermont is doing that right now. Like they're all living in like a little house by the side of a yep. road near a, like a little grocery market. Like it's it's so fucking quaint. It's, the, it's quaint. It's like pristine. It's all the people. That, I love Vermont, dude. Vermont is a, a lot of my friends went to college in Burlington. Okay. yeah. So I spent like a bit of time there. Not so much outside of Burlington, but like every time I drive... Dude, just a normal drive is like mountain ranges. Yeah. Like picturesque, gorgeous mountain it's ranges. It's beautiful. It's so cool. I have friends in a uh, Western Massachusetts, which is like basically Southern Vermont. Right. And it's like, yeah, just like rivers. You go just, you just jump into a river somewhere. Yeah. And like you get to go to this like super quaint, like some of those gorgeous towns you've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Vermont's, I love going to Vermont. It's so, in, I went to college in New Hampshire. Oh, really? And I was like, this is like, Vermont's evil twin. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. so fun because <laughs> Vermont, there's just like weed lying around on the ground, yeah. and they're hippies, and it's cool, and like everyone, like you know, Burlington's like a 
it's a smaller city, but like accessible and like mm-hmm. people are cool and cultured and, you know, drinking and like coffee and it's like beer. Like it's everyone's just happy and like good people, Bernie town, whatever. And New Hampshire is just like cows yeah, and just yeah. like guns and just like the, it's where all the most conservative people who grow up in Massachusetts move to. <laughs> I, someone said recently to me that New Hampshire is just a Boston suburb. It is, dude, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Oh, my God. I, I spent a year in New Hampshire. I was like, the best part of going to college in New Hampshire was getting to visit my friends in Vermont. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no shit. <laughs> I haven't been to Burlington yet, but I I'm a big geography nerd. I love whenever I go to a place, I'm on Google Maps. I'm, I'm oh, yeah, scouting. Dude, same. And when I realized how big Lake Champlain is and I'm like, Burlington is near mountains and a huge lake. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Dream city. Dude, so cool. It was so cool. Like we went to this. Uh, my friends brought me to this uh, place called the Bolton Potholes. OK, it was this. I shit you not. It was like just some, it was a little bit outside Burlington. It was just behind some random, like one story, like elementary school or something. There's just like, you pull over on the side of the road. There's a little path, like a little dirt path, but it's like a public beach. There's just people there hanging out. It is a series of like two or three waterfalls. Mm -hmm. We're like, starts at the top waterfall. You can like jump into like a massive middle pool mm-hmm. and then the middle pool has another waterfall that goes down to the bottom which wow. is like a little river area and people like mostly hanging out towards the top yeah we're just like drinking throwing each other beers it was like college it was super cool we're just smoking weed in public yeah and some lady comes over to us and is like hey can i take a hit and we're like yeah sure why not and i'm like what the fuck is yeah happening? yeah <laughs> it was so cool that's amazing. Vermont's such a cool place. Those I love this. Yeah. There, there's a few spots like that in Colorado where you have like a cliff jumping spot or like a river or something where people just congregate and rage. Yeah. Rules. Uh, dude, it's <laughs> not even, ah, uh, dude, it's not even rage. I wish I could rage. Do you rage? Not really. No, I don't rage. I, I think I'd, I'd say on average, my whole adult lifespan, I maybe have two beers a month. There's months really? where I just don't drink at all. Like sometimes the people are in town or I've got friends that I'm meeting up with. I'll have like a beer or two. Mm-hmm. I like to have like a party where I get drunk probably once every three months. Okay. Maybe once a quarter. Nice. Where you, you know? <laughs> a quarterly drunk. Quarterly a nice drunk. Quarterly fiscal. And even report. then I'm not like uh, I don't drink a ton ton. So nice. What about you? No, good for you. I drink more than I should. Um, Chicago, baby. Dude, it's such an alcoholic city. Yeah. No, it, it, they drink so fucking much out there. Someone it, told me it's just because the winter just gets you inside. Okay, yeah, but the winter's not there in summer, and they're still drinking. Yeah. A, a fuck. <laughs> they're just drinking. A, Chicago also on the lake, which is honestly one of the biggest selling points, because I that moved to the rules. city, and I was like, like growing up in Boston, I'm like, yeah, you can't just jump in the river, but mm. they're like, oh, yeah, let's uh, let's just go to the beach. Let's hop on the bus and go to the beach mm. from the skies. It was so cool. Um. But yeah, they're just getting hammered on the lake yeah. all summer. And it's really fun. Oh, God, dude. It's When I first moved to Chicago, uh, I was at a bar. I was doing a mic. And I was like, I forgot my wallet mm-hmm. or something. And I get a drink. And I was like, oh, shit, I forgot my wallet. And the bartender, she was like, oh, yeah, just Venmo me. I'll take it on my tips. I was like, what? The, dude, they want you to drink so much out there. Great vibe. <laughs> it is a great vibe. <laughs> I love Lake Michigan. I'm like, my family's from Michigan. Oh, yeah, I got engaged here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cute. Dude, oh, like, I don't know. Like, Lake Michigan is the best to swim in. It's like an ocean yeah. with none of the poison shit. Dude, it fucks me up. To this day, it fucks me up every time I look at it. Because I'm used to the ocean, mm-hmm. and I smell it, and I'm like, you're a fake ass ocean. Dude. Yeah. You're pretending bullshit. No salt water air. No salt water air. I can breathe here mm-hmm. next to the lake. I'm like, I like swimming in you. I shouldn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> dude, the beach is back home. I grew up on a seaside town and mm-hmm. I hated going to the beach. Is it like, like rocky and stuff? A little rock. Uh, no, it was like sandy. Like oh, okay. there were rocks on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like me and my family went to the beach a lot, but I like almost never swam. Because mm-hmm. even in summer, I was like, it's so fucking cold. This is. Oh, yeah. What, I'm like, I hate it. Like, what is this? Uh, maybe in like Miami or something. Maybe I was just being a baby because I think I stand. <laughs> I think I stand colder weather better now mm. as an adult. The trick with the water is always get your head under. Once your head's under, exactly. you're fine. But, but I, then you stand up for like a second and now you're just used to it. Now you're just cold again. Yep. <laughs> and you can't move even an inch because the lower half of your body is used to it. Mm. I don't know. 
Tell you what, I mean, I I went on a work like mm-hmm. retreat mm-hmm. in southern New Jersey, like on like the barrier island, and I was it was on the beach, and it was the middle of October, so it was fall, so it was getting cold. Mm-hmm. And I was there and I was like, I'm fucking swimming in here. My coworkers were like, you're going for a swim. And I was like, we are on the beach. Like, <laughs> I'm going to go swim around. It's sunset. It's amazing. <laughs> you ever been in Portland, Maine? Mm. Dude, you got to go to Portland, Maine. Portland's l- a lot like Burlington, mm-hmm. like all the same shit. But uh, it's on the it's on the like ocean. Yeah. And you can just uh, dude. I went there recently do some shows and like. I just I like had to buy a bathing suit and like a shitty towel from a grocery store or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like there's like wooded islands right off the beach just because it's Maine. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Pristine. And like the water is actually not too bad. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is it sandy beaches? I think it's pretty sandy. I in my brain, every East Coast beach is just rocky and has like little dinghy boats and like oysters. That makes complete sense. Uh. It, it it has the same vibe. Okay. <laughs> <You know>? Okay. <laughs> I mean, dude, everyone hates a rocky. Who likes a rocky beach, dude? No one. It, it hurts. People who are like going through something, you know, they, <laughs> they, just just, wanna... they need the pain to take their mind off something. Yeah, the Irish. <laughs> the Irish. <laughs> dude, they're just stabbing their feet with pebbles. Like reminds me of home. <laughs> Slap some cold water on it. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I I don't know. I've. It just I feel like uh, I haven't been to enough East Coast beaches and I I don't like swimming in the ocean because of slimy shit and poisonous shit typically. Yeah. But if a beach is clean enough and like fine, I'll do it, you know? Yeah, dude. I mean, makes like if you don't grow up with it, it makes even I grew up with it. I'm like, yeah, I think I like lakes more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Depends dude. on the size of the lake too. some lakes extra slimy. But oh, yeah, you got to get a bit like Great Lakes. Go for it. Yeah, you got to get enough water that it all uh, it all waters down. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like some you can't drink, but only in certain areas. The rest dunk your head. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> there's enough to it. There, there's enough pollution to be dispersed enough out. Yeah. Would I ever swim in a <laughs> lake anywhere in the south? Probably not. Really? Is it slime? Bad down there? I just I think it's slimy. Think it's slimy. Ah. In some places, I feel like I would sl- swim in a lake in like a plain state or like a desert state or like the Midwest. But like some at the south, I'm just thinking mosquitoes and slime. Oh, dude! I went to I went out to Utah. We did some. Uh, Nice. Like state parks when swimming in some watering holes, fishing out there. It was a, uh, that was gorgeous. You got to Moab? <clears throat> Not Moab. We were in St. George, like okay, Southern yeah, Utah. Yeah. Beautiful dude, area. Gorgeous, dude. I love the desert. It's great. That's, I tell everyone like the best American road trip is like four corners, like Santa Fe, Grand Canyon, oh, nice. Southern Utah. I've never done like the four corners thing. I really want to go to like New Mexico, Arizona. Like that whole thing, dude. It's a, I I thought Breaking Bad was just all right. And I really want to go there. Breaking Bad undercuts the best parts of New Mexico too. Like (laughs) Santa Fe and Taos rule. Like I've heard Taos is sick. Taos is very cool. It's very small, um, but it's, it is very cool because like you feel like the Native American like influence and they're still there and they're like Pueblos. Yeah. But it's like the, like downtown Taos is kind of just like a artsy little strip but santa fe if you haven't been there this is crazy they puebloified the whole city so the 60s they used to have a military base and that's why people would go there and then the base closed so everyone left so they're like we need a tourism thing to bring people in so they tore down all their buildings Mm -hmm. and read or redid their facades so they all look like mud pueblos so you go down there like mcdonald's is a pueblo building so sick yeah it's it's very interesting, <laughs> but it's it's very cool. No, I that's love cool it. as hell. Damn, I really got to go there. Yeah, check yeah. it out. It's a cool vibe. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm not wrapping up, but I'm truly just trying to like coordinate. Anything else you want to talk about? Topics uh, we hit? Oh yeah, we kind of got we kind of got way off topic. We got about ten minutes left. All right, no problem. I I just want to make sure I've done podcasts before. I've had even just conversation. It's like doing a set, and you're like, "Fuck, I forgot to talk. I forgot to do that one." The um yeah, can we talk about comedy stuff? Oh, uh, you know, I don't think that like I've been having a lot of comedians on recently, yeah. and I'm just like a lot of them are kind of like samey in some of the stuff we talk about, which yeah. is not an issue. Um, the like unique perspective you offer is you're in Chicago compared to most of my guests. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a new. I don't pay for open mics. Is my big draw. That was a big. That was a big trick when I came here. That was big. Like that was fucked with me. I was like, we gotta pay for open mics, and there's no audience, and there's no. Uh, dude, that was a. Uh, 
Yeah, that was that was also not. I mean, that wasn't really a factor in not moving here. But I was like, mm, didn't help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you? Do you ever plan to move to New York? Uh, it's always in the back of my mind. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. If I move here anytime soon, it's not because I think I'm ready. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's just because I'm like, I just turned 29. Yeah, uh, yeah. Might as well have a semblance mm -hmm. of my young years in uh, New York. Because I mean, like I said, I've wanted to move here for, since I was like 16. Right, right. But that was also that was also a different version of New York I had in my head versus right. what it is now. Yes. Uh, you know, just a little if it were a little less expensive, I yeah. might be a little more inclined. Um, my girlfriend also doesn't want to move here, mm. uh, which I respect. Um, so uh, I don't know. A lot of a lot of things to consider. I mean, I would. It's really cool. Did the delis alone, mm -hmm. the food you get from it's incredible. Like yeah. they just have random ass, boring, boar's head fucking grocery cold cuts and they will turn it into the greatest thing you've ever eaten it's yeah it's a fucking astonishing feat it's insane how <laughs> basic some of those sandwiches are and you eat it and you're like whoa it's like why can't i do this at home yeah like, what what's in this <laughs> it's incredible i'm all about the deli falafel like getting a falafel over Ooh. rice at places or a falafel sandwich yeah i think the lamb over rice the first time i had it uh jeff brought me to a place right next to the tiny cupboard mm-hmm I think I saw God, dude. I think it was just <laughs> lamb and white sauce. That's all I wanted to eat. Yep. And chopped cheeses, dude. I had chopped I, cheese. Last time I was here, I had two chopped cheeses in one day. <laughs> and oh, I was wow. staying with Jeff. He's like, what the fuck did you eat two in a day? It's like, dude, they're so good, though. I finally had a bacon, egg, and cheese. I've been vegan for like my like 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. So I moved to New York, didn't get to have a bacon, egg, and cheese. There's a place near me that does a vegan bacon, egg, and cheese. And mm -hmm. I was like... It's so simple, but it's so good. I was like, I finally, I was like, this is what everyone, I wish I could eat these every day. <laughs> nice. You still vegan? Yeah. Nice. I hit 10 years in May, so. Oh, congratulations. Real deep in the game. Dude, good for you. I used to work at a vegan place. Yeah. And I really respect the food. I know it's like, I mean, how hard was like 2008, 2009 for you? Because everyone's like, oh, bacon's so great. I Do -do -do -do. went, I mean, I went vegan in 2012. No, yeah. tw 2013. Okay. So, all right. So the dying age of like the internet epic bacon. Yeah. But vegans it, are dumb kind of shit. But it was also like I went vegan my <laughs> sophomore year of college. So all of my peers like mm -hmm. are just fucking idiot college kids. So a lot of them are just like, oh, like what's the deal? Oh, with they that? tied it to the political. Like I'm vegan because I'm a good person. Well, yeah. And they they just people will be like, that's stupid. Why would you ever do that? And it's like, well, like I think there's something about thinking outside of yourself and like just Here's a here's a weird little vegan trick. Mm -hmm. You can uh, you can pitch veganism to libertarians as like, well, you don't have the right to choose what those animals do with their bodies. Like you can't systematically oppress lesser species <laughs> and then watch the the wheel, the, the the cogs turn in a libertarian's mind and be like, oh, my God, am I oppressing? And then they just species? foam at the mouth. And they're like, fuck off. You like, pussy. <laughs> am I the IRS for animals? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, I actually, I used to work at a vegan place mm -hmm. and quick story related to comedy. Um, I won't name names, but uh, back when I, I used to work at a little vegan cafe, it was mm -hmm. tied to a yoga st uh, st studio and um, there was a vegan uh, comic who I was a very big fan of. And one day I'm just working at my vegan place and I look up and I'm like, is that, is that him? And then like I hear the voice is very kind of distinct. And I was like, holy shit, that's him. And uh, I had his album on my phone. Whoa. And, you know, and, you know, he's talking to someone or whatever, and then he leaves. And I go up to my boss. I'm like, Mimi, that's a, that, do you know who that guy is? He's been on TV, blah, blah, blah. He's a really famous vegan comedian. And she's like, oh, cool. Nice. Um, I was like, yeah, can I play you his album? Like, instead of music, like when we're closing up, I'll play you his album. She's like, yeah, that's super cool. And uh, so I played his album for my boss and my coworker as we cleaned up. And they hated it. <laughs> they, it Rough. was, you ever show someone a video and they don't like it? Excruciating. Excruciating. Imagine doing that to your boss for like half an hour. Like it was, he did oh. not do well. And I was like, oh boy. And then the thing is a uh, couple more times he kept coming back. And I was like, should I tell him he bombed here? <laughs> I was like, I was like, is this better? Is it better for like, imagine someone coming up to you and your favorite like coffee shop and be like, Hey, heard your stuff. You bombed here. Like, <laughs> imagine, would you go back there? 
would you be like, no. yeah, exactly. If they were like, if they're like, oh, I love your podcast, but I played it for my coworkers and they all, no one liked you. No one liked you. Yeah. Hey, we've heard your stuff. No, thank you. That's like a, that's like. Come again. Like, that's like, <laughs> keep it to yourself. Like, I don't need to know. That. <laughs> oh, dude. It's just well, who, who was it? What comedian? I don't want to name names. Okay. Because uh, he is funny. I like, he just wasn't the right, not the people for that. Mm. Um, But it was, uh, oh, dude, that, I'll, I mean, I'll tell you after, but like. Cool. It's ah, dude. <laughs> I st- I still can't get my mind around now as a comic, especially. Mm-hmm. I'm like, dude, w- like, imagine going in your favorite place and you bombed there, like, yeah, like, not knowing you bombed in a room. So wild. That's crazy, dude. Ugh. You can never look at him the same way. <laughs> I couldn't, and I mean, I still revere the guy. He's great, but I'm like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so. What are your um we're kind of wrapping up here. What yep. are your what are your long-term goals in comedy? What's your vibe right now? What are you uh, thinking? I think just kind of turn it into a way that that it's my life. Mm. Um like truly like the way I pay my rent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um you know, write it out, see, like kind of just get to the I have a, kind of a let's just get to the next step mentality. Yeah. So, you know, just get a little more established, you know, a little more exclusive, bigger festivals, bigger, some, you know, maybe go around, do some more shows around, uh, have it be a bit more of my income. Um, and then, uh, dude, as long as I have one, you ever play the Sims? Yeah. You know how in like Sims three, that was the last one I played. You have like a lifetime aspiration. Okay. And then you achieve it. You get like 15,000 Sim points or whatever. Okay. And yeah. The rest is just your Sims life. Yeah. 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 Honestly, as long as I have one month of my life where I pay my rent with comedy, I pay my bills with comedy, I don't have a day job. Yeah, I will. That's lifetime achievement. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm like, all right, the rest is just epilogue. Because like I set out to do comedy. I I made it as a comic. As yeah, long yeah. As, it doesn't matter. Like fame, whatever. As long as I can do that. I mean, I would like to like be a writer somewhere. Mm. Um. Like being for like a show or, you know, even just like books or stuff. Right, right, that'd right. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just kind of want to just do it, get good at it. And then uh, people are like, hey, you should, uh, we want to see more of you, you know, <laughs> tour around. Yeah. It's cool. um, I, I didn't go on a whole lot of planes or go to a whole lot of hotels growing up. So mm-hmm. I think that part is still really appealing oh. to me. Yeah, I like ever not appealed to me at all. No, no. <laughs> you see, I didn't go on enough vacations. Now mm. I'm just like, hell yeah, ho- do I get a Motel Six? Fuck yes, dude. <laughs> let's go. I I low key do love like when I have to go on a work trip somewhere because I'm like free flight, free hotel, expensed meals, and I get to f- just hang out in a new place. Yeah, nice. Yeah, and even if it doesn't pan out, which statistically it won't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I still got to say I spent my 20s doing people's it was, public speaking is people's number one fear. Yeah. I still got to do something really cool for my yeah. youth. So I don't know. It's all just perspective. You kind of just got to go into it with like, you know, people, people kind of stress too much and rightfully so. I still stress about career stuff. But yeah. I'm like, look, if you do one show and people end up laughing, you did a great job. Yeah. You did good. Yeah. <laughs> I heard a horrifying, I think it was like a, I saw a horrifying tweet years ago that just said, uh, you were a comedian is going to be this generation's. You were in a band. Ooh, I almost threw up. I was like, "Fuck, you're so right." Holy shit! I think it's not the you were a comedian. Like, I'd be like, I wasn't a comedian. I am a comedian. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I haven't done a mic in ten years, but I'm a comedian. Damn. Yeah, right. I, I mean, as long as you keep getting, uh, getting booked on shows. <laughs> I know. It'd be funny if that was the marker. Is like you're not a comedian if you don't do mics, and you're like saying that to like, like people on tv doing oh, specials Christ, doing specials who are probably still going to the yeah. mics <laughs> oh dude it's so wild i finally figured out the line between an open micer and a comedian mm-hmm. and it was like sometime last year where i re- realized like oh if you do just like two shows a week and you don't have to go to open mics because you get to be in front of an audience you you're not an open micer anymore yeah open micers i I figured out the line is if you just do open mics and you never get booked on anything basically oh, dude there's nothing sadder than the guy who's like yeah dude i'm grinding i'm at like 10 mics a week and it's like all right cool you booked on anything he's like no i'm like there might be a reason my guy at that point if you're if you're one year in and you're doing 10 mics a week still and you're not getting booked on anything just pivot take 
take three of those days and just plan a monthly show. Just plan put it, it together. Exactly. Just put together, put it, build it yourself. It's like, you don't have to hit up every, and dude, to newer comics, especially I'm like, yeah, you know, not every mic is worth it. Yeah. Like be out there, be active, but like, don't show up late to work to go try out a joke. You don't even want to do in yeah. front of three people. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, my advice is first two years, do as many as possible, get good. Yes. But like, be out there, do the certain yeah. ones consistency. But then it's like, yeah, seriously, don't, don't become not a person. Like yeah. you still have yep. to be a person. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be known as the person who's at every open mic, but not anywhere else. Oh, dude, that's because like, like the best case scenario is you're just that comic talking about comedy. And I'm yeah. like, I, I don't yeah. like that guy. Like, I just don't. Oh yeah. This joke. Usually I was doing, show, I'm like, I don't tell us about comedy. Show us why you're a comedian. Yep. You know, my rule is uh, don't tell don't tell the audience at a show that the open mics exist. Don't let them know that there's anything more to being a comedian than you just walking on stage right that moment and being funny. Oh, dude. Right. Don't I got, peel back the curtain. Dude, I got a I, I told some. Uh, so I promoted my show mm -hmm. in the Chicago comedians group. And sometimes I try to like give a bit of comedy try to get a bit of discussion going just because I know comics a will have a fucking opinion on it. Yep. <laughs> and then the comments will drive the views and then it stays in everyone's feed. And then like, Oh, Hey, discount therapy. Nice. Mm -hmm. Cool show. I know that name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one time I posted, I just posted a suggestion. I was like, Hey, maybe instead of saying you, uh, work a day job, say you used to work a day job. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even if you still have it, because yeah, I don't know. Idea. It implies that, you're professional at this, which means the audience will trust you because I've seen comics talk about their day job and I look to the crowd and I see someone being like, oh, no, I spent ten dollars to see someone who mm. could be my coworker fucking tell jokes. Yeah. yeah. So like, I don't know, it just I feel like it implies a bit of credibility Ooh, and, and you're manifesting. If you say you used to have a day job and you're manifesting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and dude, you're dressing for the job you want. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, look, even in front of like six people at a diner in Indiana, they want to know they're in good hands of a comedian. Yeah, I'm going to be like, I used to have a day job. I used to rent, too. I used to be poor. <laughs> oh, dude, right? And then, uh, I don't know, some <laughs> some people some people didn't like it. Uh, some people thought it was great. I, it was truly just a suggestion. Fucking yeah, do yeah. it or don't. Um, and my co-producer, Sarah, said something really funny to me. She's like, no one with credits is mad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Right. But anyway, I forget the whole point of the story, but I don't know. Just a suggestion. Yeah. Say it used to be your day job. That's but a good idea. I like it. that. Don't quit it. <laughs> don't quit it uh, yet. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. we're at our time. Yeah. Final question. What do you love about stand-up comedy? Oh, dude, it is. It's everything. Like it's you get to life sucks, dude. Life <laughs> truly sucks. And like we all just the crowd just gets together and we all just get to laugh at the smallest, dumbest shit. We get to take a trip to the grocery store and just make it universal. Like everyone feels like they belong mm -hmm. when they're laughing. Yeah. You know, like life is like homework and stand up is study group. We're all just here to just trying to figure this bullshit out. That's what I truly love about it. Mm. Like comic, I don't think comics are like philosopher, or whatever. We're just trying to make sense of this shit. Like half philosopher, half entertainer, whatever the fuck. Look, life sucks. Let's all just lighten up a bit. That's what I love. About it. <laughs> That's great. I love that. Mm. I think uh, the study when you said uh, life is homework, comedy is a st like comedians are like that's a study group. I thought you were say recess, but then I realized it's not actually. <laughs> <laughs> that fun <laughs> but yeah no, it makes I think sense life if life is homework i think killing yourself is recess yeah <laughs> then you get baby. Out of it. suicide is recess baby <laughs> <laughs> think that's another episode of don't kill yourself uh, <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't kill. <laughs> all right joe where can the people find you uh uh in chicago uh new york for the next like two days but i'll be back in chicago by then um yeah chicago i run a show called discount therapy Go um, check it out. Please, especially if you're in Edgewater. Um, yeah, find me at Jokes Medoff on uh, Instagram. Uh, don't have Twitter. Uh, yeah, I pull my stuff online. Instagram is probably the best way. Nice. Uh, tick I'm on TikTok too. Barely ever post there, but you know, it's um, just uh, find me somewhere in the wind. 
My, awesome. spi- my spirit's all around, dude, Maxim. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, go find him in Chicago. Go to his show, Discount Therapy. Follow him on Instagram. Find his spirit in the wind. And uh, thank you guys for listening. We'll talk to you all next week. Bye. Bye.